the skill of the dwarves was unequaled, fashioning objects of great beauty. Hey, my Govan, and welcome back to another Araquin Caladrum. This time we're on the workbench, working on some special custom trophies that I've been working on for you know, quite some time here. And these trophies have gotten a bit of attention, so I was asked to make a video about how I did it. So this is going to be a video where I attempt my best to explain how I made these trophies. Quick, I'll show you the materials. Here's a look at the trophies. You can see that they're dice shaped and you can see an attempt at some stone and there's some underbrush and growth on the stone. The bases around the trophies have a mix of terrain types. You've got some bushes and some water effect and some moss and some other interesting things. But generally speaking, they're these you know, quasi-iconic towers that are made out of dice. So I'm going to show you all the pieces I used to make that. I'll go through the tools that I used to make it with. And I'll try to do a couple of steps here on the camera and then I'll show you some pictures. And hopefully when this is all done, you'll be confident and ready to make them yourself. Uh, most of the stuff that I used for this is scrap. There's a couple of materials in here that are not scrap, so I'll show you those as well. And this is one of them. So this I got from a local craft store. I live in Ontario, Canada. And in Ontario, Canada, we have a, a very reputable store chain called Michael's. And Michael's sells these for about a dollar fifty Canadian, uh, about a pound or about a dollar US. And they're fantastic. They're just the right shape and size here. On top of that, I put some leftover dice. I have lots of different dice. I collect dice and enjoy collecting dice. There's lots of fun things that you can do with dice. So I, I took four very big dice that I didn't really have an exciting plan for, glued them on that base, and then built up from there, I use a lot of dollar store glue. Anything that's not um, going to be super visible to the naked eye, I go to, in Canada, the dollar store and I pick up really, really cheap glue. And when that's done, these containers are sort of waste. There's a lot of things you can use them for, but they're generally just kind of extra. So I've actually drilled out a hole in this container. You can kind of just see it on the camera there. I've stuck a magnet in the top of the container, and this is ready to be glued on right there. All of these trophies, these finished ones, have done the same thing. There's a magnet on the top of the tower that is the trophy. There's magnets underneath the base of the model and they're magnetized so that you can use them and it keeps them playable. Some of the models I've actually redone the model and put it on a, a metal washer and um, put magnets inside the lid of the trophy. And it's the, the exact same as the magnet that I've got here. They're just, just little magnets that you can get from the hobby stores. Games Workshop has them. Lots of, other, lots of other terrain stores have them. Then I took some leftover dice. I have a whole bunch of miscellaneous leftover dice, some of which I picked up cheap off of the internet, some of which uh, came in the boxed set. These are extras that I don't really use. I have lots of custom dice that I really like. So these are extra dice that I don't have as much of a use for. And I literally glued them randomly around on the big dice and up the side as stairs. So um, that worked really, really well and gave a really fun effect. Then again, back to the dollar store. It's one of my favorite stores. There's this stuff. This is foam sheets and it's, it's like a sticker on the back. It's got a peel and stick surface. So this peel and stick surface makes it really, really easy to use this stuff for all kinds of different crafts. And my kids use this at school. We've used this for projects at our church. We use this for all kinds of stuff. Really, really easy to work with. What I did with that, I'll turn the camera a little bit here and show you. What I did with that is cut it up into different pieces. I used a ruler that has a stiff edge. This is a metal ruler with a really stiff edge. I pressed down into that foam and just scored it. And I scored it at uh, two millimeter, three millimeter intervals. So you can't see that. Let's see if we can focus the camera. You can't see that super well, but there's a little score mark in there. And then, just with a pen, I went in and, and literally drew blocks one at a time. And by doing that, it gives you this very nice um, realistic effect where the blocks look like cut stone. They don't look uniform. They look similar. They're consistent one with another but they're not uniform. They've got a little bit of creativity to them. They look more natural that way. If you were to draw a great big line across the, uh, across the foam, if I was to use this ruler and just score it a bunch of times and just draw a bunch of lines and then um, press the lines in deep enough that they would stay. Sorry, the other reason I use the pen is because it presses the lines in nice and deep. 
and makes the foam uh, permanently sort of stuck in that shape. It will remember its shape if you press hard enough. If you don't press hard enough, it'll lose its shape. It'll reform back to its natural shape. But if you push hard enough that you can actually see the squares on the back, then they'll stay and they won't end up recovering their shape again. They'll, it sort of surpasses the foam's ability to recover its own shape. So I, I push good and hard. I, when I did a whole bunch of these all at once, that was the slowest and longest part of making these trophies. And it gave me a little bit of a hand cramp. I was just sort of tired by the time it was all said and done. Um, but it works really well. And then the foam keeps its shape. It looks really good as these little bricks. And, uh, and it will not recover after that. It'll just stay that way. So what I ended up doing um, is tracing the foam out around the stepped ladder of stairs that I have on here, of dice stairs. And then I had to cut them around that. So I'm just going to quickly glue a couple of things together here. You can watch me while I do this. This is not overly sophisticated, and I'll try my best to do this on the camera so that you can see this as I do it. Um, I liked to try to keep these dice with different surfaces visible so that um, when you see the final trophy, um, it's got a bit of interest to it and that the numbers are not all the same. So I you know, turn them off center from each other and make sure that there's more than one number visible. Now this super glue bonds really, really fast on these plastics. So be careful, make sure you get it lined up right because you're not gonna get a second chance. And if you don't get it exactly the way you want it to be, you probably will not be able to fix it. So um, just make sure that you move quick. The glue is already solid. It didn't take long at all. And my son likes to see the sixes, so I tried to keep the sixes out where they were visible. I'm just gonna glue that down on the wood. It'll take a second longer to dry to the wood. Um, oh, there it is, it's hard already. I'm gonna make sure that I center that as best I can because that will give me the most room to put other terrain around it when I'm done later. So there we go, get that stuck on there nice and good. There is a, there's a thin rim around the edge of this container. Not much of a rim, but there's enough. I'm just putting the instant glue on the rim. And I'm gonna have to try my best to be coordinated and sit that down in the very middle of the big dice so that I don't really mess this up later. Because again, you only get one chance. And if it's not a perfect flat fit, it's really not a big deal. It's gonna stick and bond really, really hard. It's not gonna last long to, as it dries. Um, and then once it's hard, it's done. It's not going to move again. <clears throat> and later, after after we've gone another few steps in building this, there, see that's hard already. Um, after we've gone another few steps in building this, if it's not perfect, if there's little gaps anywhere, we're going to fill those gaps with other things. And that won't be difficult either. I'm going to get a bunch of little dice of some mixed sizes here, some really small ones, and some less small but still comfortably, usably small. And as we stick these dice on here, it's going to take them seconds to become stuck so hard, so fast that they're not going to move anywhere. So you do want to think a little bit about how you're doing this while you're putting them on. I've of course done a few of these already, so I'm not overthinking this. I'm quite happy to just get them stuck on there. And put them in sort of random patterns um, underneath where the stairs are going to go. You don't want to overfill the space that is going to have stairs on it. Oh, I put the two fives side by side, so I'm just going to turn that quick. I didn't actually give that enough glue in the right place. Let's try that one more time. Now these are the dice that are not part of the stairs, so I'm deliberately just making a bit of a mess out of those, just as I've done over here where they're kind of random. And there's really no rhyme or reason to them. The stairs, on the other hand, you really do want to make sure that there's at least some consistency between them. Um, and by that, I mean use the same kinds of sizes. If I'm going to have three that are one size and two that are another, then I want the staircase on the other side, which winds the same direction, uh, to be as much as possible identical. And I am putting a bit of glue on the step and a bit of glue on the side that is going to stick um, to the empty tube here and it will stick very quickly. Alright, so there's one stair. 
You can see, it's, I mean, it sticks really well, just like that. And this is, no, oh, and I can't turn that. Oh, there we go. Um, there. So that's all I've done to put the stairs on there. I can do the other side off camera. Once we have staircase up and ready, and we've got a handful of these other features sort of where we want them, kind of randomly around the tray. So again, we're just adding those for visual interest. There's really no rule about this. This is my trophy. I've made it completely randomly. Now the one thing I will say is you can see that by putting these dice on here the way that I have, I'm starting to have some awkward shapes emerge. So if I want to put bricks, as I've done here, <clears throat> underneath in this little gap, I'm going to have to cut a, a challenging piece of foam to fit in there. And there's some awkward shapes in here already. Here's the edge of the glue container, just sort of bumping up. That used to be, um, used to be the lip that held the lid on. And when you glue it upside down, that lip is still going to be there. So as we get farther along in this process, what I've done on the more completed trophies. Now, hang on, I'm gonna pull the camera off the tripod so we can take a better look. I've put various bits of random terrain in those little gaps. Sometimes I've used stone, sometimes I've used growing things. I've just filled those gaps with random things that are easy shapes to fit in there because they're easy. <laughs> and I was trying to save myself time. There's lots of things that you can spend your time on when you're doing work on these trophies, that's for sure. So I didn't want to waste my time on that. All right, so when we get a little farther on there, what are we going to do? I like to use wood glue, um, only because I use a couple of different glues for a couple of different things, but uh, wood glue or this Elmer's school glue. Um, I like the wood glue because it doesn't dry very quick, but it dries really, really hard. And the craft glue is just not as strong. You can, with your, if you pull hard enough with your hands, you can pull stuff off with the craft glue, but it works really, really well for most things. I like to use the wood glue for the next step, and what I will do is um, pour the glue all over the place and make a great big mess out of it. I, I pour the glue all over the bottom of the tray over gaps that I want to build up. Sometimes I put it in little gaps like, move the tripod a little, make some room here, sorry. Um, I'll put it in gaps like right underneath here, down in the middle, um, underneath, the, underneath the dice. Um, I'll put it in this gap or anywhere where I don't want to have to do something slow like carving up all these little tiles. And I'll, I'll pour a big pile of glue in there. Then I'll take random types of gravel. This is one of my favorites to use. We have recently redone the roof on our house. This is asphalt shingle. It, uh, it has various sizes of gravel in it. It's waste that would have gone to the landfill. We like to repurpose things when we can. And inside this, we, should, we scraped off some of the leftover roof tiles, and there's a whole bunch of mixed gravel sizes in here. So it works really, really well if you're looking for a mixed gravel. And I feel good about the fact that it didn't go to landfill. So um, that is what we did on the... Let me see if I can get a good view here. On the bases all around the other trophies. It's just that mixed gravel. And I've got some of that stuffed up inside the gaps too. All right, so after we did that and glued the mixed gravel all over the place. Then I spray painted the whole thing with this natural stone. Um, Krylon, I don't believe, is the only company that makes this kind of spray paint. But this is a spray paint that has sandy grit inside it. And what it did is it made a nice even coat all over the entire trophy, which turned these smooth dice, because they are, I mean, they're dice, they're fairly smooth on the edges, turn these smooth dice into these beautiful stone-like surfaces that are just, they're just scuffed up a little bit. They just had a bit of texture. And it's a thin enough texture that it didn't actually mar any of the detail on the stonework that I had carved in there with a pen. Um, and that was really important. It, it added some texture to those as well, so instead of them being smooth, which looked fine, honestly, I wasn't concerned about that. Um, but it added a little bit of texture to them. It added texture to all the dice. 
And because it was spray applied, it kept all of the pips from the dice. You can see none of them, I mean, they still look like dice. They didn't lose their detail. And that was important. There are lots of other ways that I could have mixed sand and glue, PVA, or things like that to apply it, even on the undersides of these stairs, and just fill up all those little gaps with sand to put some grit or some texture on these otherwise very smooth dice that, I mean, they look like dice. And I wanted them to look like stone that was dice shaped. So spraying them with the natural stone spray was perfect. It, it worked exactly the way that I wanted it to. Um, so I use Krylon natural stone. There's others. Uh, you can pick whichever is your favorite. Again, in, in my area, I got that from the Michaels craft store. You might be able to get that from a local craft store where you live. After I had sprayed the trophy top to bottom, I sprayed the whole thing with the natural stone spray. Then I primed it black, then I reprimed it gray, then I did some dry brushing and textured it up and, uh, and built up the layers of paint. After I got a little bit farther into that, I just added a bunch of stuff that you can see here. I mean, it's not going to be quick or easy to do this on the video, but I can do this with pictures later. But yeah, I used things like Cinerama's um, water effect. I just poured a few drops of the water effect around the bases and then got a really nice, really nice, simple water effect. That is the same gravel that I showed you earlier, primed black, dry brushed gray, and then some drops of water effect on it. That's all it is. And then all the rest of what's on here is just random bits of terrain that I have collected over time. And I cut it up and just made it random. So if I look at the moss on the side here, all the moss is, including the moss on the steps, all that it is, is flock. And I liberally applied a whole, whole bunch of this glue. And then I tipped the trophies on their sides. I did one side at a time. And I sprinkled flock all over the trophy and uh, covered it up more than it probably needed to be. Um, I'll show you the flock that I used. It's really not a special flock. Several suppliers that use this stuff. It's just a tray of mixed flock. Fairly consistent greens even. It's not even super rocket science. Um, so I used that mixed flock, sprinkled it, on the gaps between the stairs, sprinkled it on the edges around the stairs, sprinkled it on the stairs, and then sprinkled it all over the face of the trophy, um, which I deliberately cut up a little bit. You can see, as much as I took my time to paint, you know, to carve out every one of these little um, stone blocks from that foam that I showed you earlier, the side of the trophy, all up and down here, I left a gap between the two pieces of foam blocks and I poured um, gravel in there as well. And then after I poured all the gravel in there, it made a really nice sort of rough chewed up surface that a vine might have eaten its way through as it was growing up there over time. And it gave me the opportunity to be a little bit more, um, I don't know, a little faster with the way that I carved up this foam. So if I had shapes of the foam, which for example were not perfect, you can see that I've got a little bit of a score underneath the edge of the foam right here. If I drew my bricks on here and I had too smooth of an edge on the side, I just put a little extra gravel on the edges to rough it up a little bit and make it look less linear and less exact. Um, and I covered the edges in a few places with some of the gravel. In other places I actually cut um, bits away from the edges. So where I went back and forth on here, I drew those tiles offset. Um, so for this row, I would draw the blocks all roughly the same size, and then I started the line for the next block halfway through the line below it. And uh, so if I drew blocks right here, um, the next block literally would just start halfway through. And I would push a lot harder if I was doing that for real. Um, so hard that you could see it on the back. And if you push it so hard that you can see it on the back, then it keeps its shape. And I would just go back and forth like that. I would start halfway through this block for the next line and just drew them all up. I scored them in lines and then I drew each block individually. And then when I want to make a, a rough edge on the trophy, I would cut out these bits on the end so that the blocks kind of step in and step out. And then I would cut in two and then cut in three and just do some inconsistent things to make it look like the blocks had actually broken off. And sometimes I would half cut the block. You can see a bit of a, a corner shape here. Sometimes I would half cut the block randomly. These trophies are almost entirely random. The pattern on them is really not consistent at all. And that was by design. It makes it look more real. It makes it look more ruinous. And um, 
that was the effect that I was trying to go for. I wanted these to look very, very old, overgrown, and ruined. And I did that by pouring gravel up through here, um, prime the whole thing black, um, reprime it gray, dry brushed it with an off white to make the stone look kind of like stone. And then I put some browns in here as I dry brushed, put a couple of layers of brown in there um, very, very lightly, and then just sprinkled the flock on top of it. And that's all that is. That's flock glued on top of some gravel and some foam. So I have a couple of pictures. We'll work those pictures in the video to try to give you a bit more of a feel for how that how that material set actually worked. Um, I can show you some more of the materials that I used here for my random terrain. You get some bushes from a group like Army Painter. You can put a couple of these bushes down around the bases to uh, add a little bit of creativity to the texturing of the terrain in there. I used some clump foliage from Woodland Scenics. Woodland Scenics has so many great products. I used a bunch of their products for this. Um, these little tree pieces actually came from this great pig thing. It's a bunch that is not really intended for wargaming, but it's got perfect, perfect shapes. All these little tree shapes in there. Ashland Natural Bundles. It cost about $10 Canadian for this you know, this huge bundle, which I could get a whole army and a whole bunch of terrain out of. And I cut it into little pieces. You know, very, very little pieces. Uh, this one's just a couple of inches tall. I can get a couple hundred of those out of the bag. This one's several inches tall, just to look nice, just randomly around the base of each of the trophies. There's a bit of a taller one right there. Um, cut them up to whatever shape seems to do the job. You can see here I poured a little more water effect around that base than I did on the others. A little more moss up around the stairs again, which is, I mean, it's nothing fancy. Again, that's just flock poured on top of the steps. I put some gravel, some extra gravel on there, and some flock on top of the gravel. And that was basically all I did. Um, I had some gaps in some places because I just didn't measure things out perfectly. As I was putting these dice randomly on the side of the trophy and then putting the tile all the way up to the top of the trophy, I had gaps over the stairs on both sides in a lot of places. So I covered some of them with flock. I covered others with little tile gaps. Um, I did one winter-themed trophy and covered it with snow instead of flock. It's just a white flock instead. And actually the same bundle of green trees that I showed you, Ashland, the same company, makes white ones and brown ones. So I just mixed up the terrain. For the snowy guy here, I added a little bit of a misting effect. This is stuffing from one of my kids' dolls. They had a doll that was going to the garbage, and before the doll went to the garbage, I snitched a whole bunch of the stuffing from the doll and kept it so that I could use it for fog and mist and snow. And in that case, there's a, a model that's going on the top of that that's a spirit-like model. Um, these, Because these are trophies, it's not for this video, but I cast a mold and put a couple of special models in the molds and made some see-through versions. These are ring bearers for Lord of the Rings. And this is J.R.R. Tolkien, um, one of the miniature sculptors I found online. Bearskin Miniatures, if you're watching, thank you for having some great sculpts. They had a gentleman, a scholarly gentleman model, which makes a really fantastic... J.R.R. Tolkien. I was really, really happy with that model. I can't really see. Excuse the lighting. Let me just get off the tripod and move over under the light. Just a really nice model. So we did that up as a prize. We've got a handful of very special models we chose for this. Our ring bearers from the movies and the books. And just wanted to make it exciting and special, so that's how we did it. Um, and that's a quick overview of how I did these trophies. Obviously, it took me longer than that in real life. Uh, the slowest step, the most painful step, was drawing all these little bricks. Um, gluing all the rest of these together, I, I'm not about to say that I don't want to overrepresent my skill. I think I'm kind of slow at some of these things. It took me 10 hours, give or take, to make all four trophies together. And um, that's because I've got a bit of a, a built-up stash of terrain pieces that I could use for this, but you don't really have to have too, too many pieces in order to do this. Again, I made it out of scrap. So I got this for $1.50 Canadian. I had extra dice. I had a glue container left over. I did buy the magnets so that I could stick a magnet in the top there. But all of this was scrap except for the case, uh, the, the base that I put it on. So all of this was recycled scrap. All the gravel that I used was recycled um, from some waste that I had around my house from a home renovation project. Um, all of the tiles that are drawn on here came from foam that I got really inexpensively from the dollar store. All of the 
uh, bushes and flocking and everything on here is just standard stuff that I have for basing my miniatures for uh, pretty much any kind of wargaming. Uh, I use the Woodland Scenics Scenorama um, water effect, blue realistic water effect. And that was probably the most expensive piece of the whole thing was the water effect. And then spray paints. And again, the natural stone spray really uh, transformed the dice, the fairly smooth looking surfaces off of the dice into sort of roughed up gravelly looking surfaces, textured surfaces, which were very much still dice, but textured. And then the rest is just painting. So I hope this video was helpful to you. hope it inspires you or encourages you to go make your own trophies or make your own uh, terrain out of scraps that you have lying around your house. So sometimes one man's trash is another man's treasure, very much for real. And these trophies got lots of really positive feedback. I'm very excited to give them away. I hope people will love them. And um, I look forward to making more of them in the future. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support. And we will do some more videos like this again in the future. And uh, until then, happy gaming.